Right, hey everyone, it's Brian Porter. We are here at the Porter shop today. It is April 1st and uh, it's been quite the 2020 for all of us, as you can imagine. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about something that happened earlier this year. We're gonna look backwards a little bit because uh, right now looking forward is, is kind, of, kind of scary, kind of unknown for a lot of us in the music industry. And this was a video that we wanted to make uh, probably in, in February sometime, but it got a little crazy even then as we got back from the NAMM show and um, we're talking about was NAMM worth it? So was it worth it for us as a small business? Was it worth it to go to the show and to exhibit? Um, 2020 was our first winter NAMM show as, a, as an exhibitor. So we have, you know, had gone to the show before as, as just uh, walking the floor, if you will, checking out some different uh, booths and, and kind of getting a feel for, is that something that we wanted to do in the future? Um, so this is our 11th year in business and we decided, you know, we better try to go and see, how, see you know, just how we would do at the show, uh, kind of what, how it would benefit us to go. So we signed up uh, kind of in the mid to late fall of last year of uh, 2019 and we, we looked at a couple options of, you know, where do we want to be booth wise and size wise, um, you know, as you, as you start down that path, many of you that have looked at a, a NAM booth realize it's very expensive, even for a small booth, let alone, you know, the bigger booths and the, the larger, you know, more, more valuable footprints or if you will. And uh, we, we tried to figure out kind of the best uh, case scenario for us. And so we were in the basement we were in hall E. If you've been to the NAM show, there is ABCD upstairs and in the basement is Hall E and we we're in what was called the Innovator Showcase. Now I'm not sure why they called it that other than that it was maybe some more boutique businesses kind of over in that area. Um, maybe it's just a way to market that uh, it's, it's worth going down to check out because many people didn't make it down to the basement. Um, so long story short for us, um, we'll talk a little bit about the leading up to the show but but Getting right to the point, um, this year it was really worth it for us to go. Um, it was worth it for the exposure. It was worth it for a couple reasons we'll talk about just in a minute here. But uh, you know, as we look back and as we look forward, uh, we had a lot of deals that were were pending, and, and some of them that were supposed to kind of land in this last you know March month, April month, and and of course with the music industry completely being turned upside down with this virus issue, we've. We've looked at it and said, well, we don't know the the impact of the, the show kind of long term just because everything's kind of frozen right now. So we've tried to figure out, you know, there was a bunch of pending deals that could have happened for us to make it uh, even more worth it. But uh, we broke even at the show. We got a lot of good leads. And as the music industry turns around, hopefully there's some of those leads that will come back for us so that will uh, be beneficial. Um, but for right now, it's, it's definitely the unknown as we talked about in the intro. So we'll kind of focus on the part of the show, um, like I mentioned, leading up to the show. So heading into the show, we, we decided to do a kind of a joint booth. Uh, for those that don't know, we do full electric guitars and pickups in our shop. So we've got a couple major projects going at any given time. We decided to basically put everything into our one booth, which is just a 10 by 10 booth. And we decided to fit some guitars and, and pickups and little pickup displays. We'll show some pictures as I'm talking just of the booth and kind of uh, the way that it looked there. We had the guitars on the floor. We had a backdrop above the booth that kind of uh, showed us, you know, a little representation of our, of our company over the last uh, three, four years. And one of the things we realized that really showed, um, showed people a lot of our capabilities because we did have catalogs, we did have materials to hand out, we had guitars to show, but that was kind of a cool collage, sort of like a, a, a snapshot, if you will, of, of our business from the last couple of years. Um, so that was a huge hit at the show. Uh, we had to build seven or eight guitars in a very short amount of time. We got those knocked out. We were uh, also developing our new Portertron Almaco pickups at the same time, as well as a Bigsby model guitar. So it was kind of crazy for that whole like November, December, even into the first part of January, we had to get everything out the door and it was, um, it was very fast paced and very, very chaotic and, and uh, a few nights of just, hopefully we will make the deadlines that we want to. Um, we had a crate that had to be, be shipped out at the, end of, um, at the end of December, I believe it was. So we had to get everything loaded up, ready for the show and that was gonna be a couple weeks later. So we got everything there, we met the deadlines. Um, for us as a small business and a smaller crew, it was uh, 
it was a lot of strain on us on our on our shop obviously financially straining to try to piece everything together to get there um, we went with a cheaper route on the booth which looked pretty nice we had kind of a fake wood floor and just some simple displays and it really was a hit it wasn't very flashy it was just kind of who we are and showed a good representation of of our brand and the way that we sit in the industry um, some of the great things for us were that we went to the show and there's a lot of people who are customers already and so this was part of like feeling the early success of the show is that um, you know we met our dealers we met our customers people who have bought from us direct people who have uh, wanted to try the guitars out for a while but they haven't got a chance and so some of the things about that were actually really cool uh, some side benefits were we're getting to go and meet people that we were in conversation with about maybe uh, guitar builders or future deals uh, go and meet them in person and discuss you know how we could help them as a pickup winding company ways we could kind of collaborate on different projects and and even meeting some people that um, we've known like Hank from Rattlesnake Cables and some of these other guys that we've known forever and just have never never met in person so that was uh, that was another benefit of the show I think just strengthening existing relationships finding new ones what we did as well as before the show we just we didn't want to wait around and just hope that a bunch of people came by we we set up a ton of appointments we set up you know specific meetings we set up kind of networking conversations and and uh, try to get some media slots going we were a little late to the media game for those who who kind of know the media kind of makes a little circuit and interviews people and that's a really big part of the NAM exposure so we missed out on some of that because we were a little late in booking our booth and many of those media guys were already you know their whole entire schedule was was very full um, we brought a, a little bit bigger crew so we could kind of sustain ourselves through through the whole show and make sure that we could we could last uh, with all the noise and with all the um, just talking over people we were all pretty pretty shot after the, at the end of every day um, but as we look back there were some real big highlights for us as meeting industry friends um, me, going to some of our we went to one of our local dealers and talked to them about um, you know how we could support them and and uh, met some of our other dealers like Upfront Guitars and some other people that are a full line dealer so they carry the guitars and the pickups and they were able to pick up some new uh, one of our new semi hollow models and then they were also able to um, you know order some of our new Portertron Alnico's things like that so so for us we really tried to maximize uh, the show and having two different product lines I think also helped because one of the things we found with our guitars is it's very hard to kind of get for people to kind of get the vibe of the guitars just because they're new and they're different designs so having them in person having uh, you know hundreds of people being able to touch and play them and plug them in you know most people knew that they would be confident in the sound because they know about our pickups but but getting the, the chance for them to you know feel the the frets in their hands and to hold the neck and feel what it you know the profile is and and just hear the pickups in the platforms of the guitars that we created was um, was super exciting for us it was very cool very kind of a big you know we're, we're filming this video right now as as we just launched the uh, Krosis model three years ago so now we're um, you know a couple more models in and and so the NAM show was kind of the culmination of just getting in front of people and showing them our you know what we do as a business as a whole business as opposed to just this this compartmentalized type of uh, setup so we went into the show with a lot of different angles I think that was that was one thing I'm very fortunate that we had is other angles to make money it wasn't just pickup sales it wasn't just guitars um, that was kind of a leg up I think for us um, but it was very encouraging to see our brand um, you know being recognized and being you know people saying oh yeah I've bought, I've bought something from you or oh I've heard of you guys I didn't know you made guitars or things like that so that part of it obviously the in-person you know communication we couldn't really um, replicate that at all um, not we couldn't get that many people to see our stuff in person so that was probably one of the biggest benefits of just like you know hey this is who we are this is what we make and and here it is and you and you should check it out and pick it up and play it uh, many people did a few people took some guitars home with them and and uh, some stores bought some guitars and we we had a lot of great conversations um, now we're kind of looking at this fallout of, of the virus situation and saying well you know some of our like I mentioned before some of our follow-ups are not going to come through that's okay uh, we, we definitely did a lot of brand building and investing at that show so long story short 
the NAMM show was worth it for us. Um, it was a lot of money. So for those who are thinking about going to the NAMM show, even, you know, we did it about as cheaply as we possibly could. We got, you know, an Airbnb and we had a bunch of people kind of contribute to that. Um, we had uh, this very simple booth. We had the cheapest booth that we could get size wise. Um, they're all the same price per square foot, but down in the basement, you know, we had a specific uh, spot that we, we liked and uh, everything was about, you know, it was not, uh, it was not uh, overall very, very cheap, but we got everything done. We were able to get to the show. Uh, we were able to kind of cover uh, financially most of the show. So that gave us a little bit of a better confidence in, in making it happen. For those who are looking for NAM to be, you know, a, a break, a big break for you, uh, I, I think it can still happen. I think that you've got to spend a lot of uh, legwork, like I mentioned before, that we did a lot of calls, a lot of emails, hey, can we meet at the show, can we do this? Pretty much just try to fill your schedule up as full as possible. Um, I recommend walking the show for a couple times if you're still on the fence. Um, it kind of once you go down that line of, of booking the booth and buying the plane tickets and lodging and, and meals, it it's really starts to ramp up financially a lot. Um, so just figure out if that's something you're willing to swallow. Um, Cause I think even, even thinking back to how much it costs and knowing that it was worth it for us to go, I still kind of feel the burden of, of how much we spent on the show and thinking, man, I would have liked to have that money maybe in savings right now, heading into this crazy season. Um, so, so for those who are on the fence, um, spend, it's spend, spend the money to travel down there, um, spend a little bit of time just kind of absorbing what the show is. It's very overwhelming. There's a lot of people, a lot of booths. Um, go pick people's brains. You know, hey, how'd the show work out for you? You know, how many years have you gone to the show? Is it worth it? You know, kind of people that you respect in the industry usually are pretty happy to talk to you about uh, kind of how it works for them. Uh, but ultimately you need to decide for yourself if it is worth it for you uh, as a company um you know is it is it is the trade-off do you feel confident enough about the trade-off you know every marketing thing is a risk so you don't know if it's going to uh, be be something that's just going to turn your business upside down um, that used to be one of the main ways that you could get your product in front of people now there's a million different ways with digital marketing social media all that kind of stuff. So you have to decide if that's something that um, you're willing to kind of take that financial risk. Um, if it's, you know, if, if you're looking at the NAM cost being a month or two months of your regular revenue, uh, you may want to be really careful about making that decision because obviously that's, that's a massive chunk. And if you don't sell anything, then you've got that much farther to, um, to get yourself back on track. Uh, the other thing to consider too is the way that you sell your products. So, we have a pretty good dealer network. And so that for us was like NAM being, you know, a mostly a dealer focused show. I mean, obviously there's, there's industry friends and, and people like that, that, that will come by your booth that don't necessarily work at a music store. Um, you have to be mindful of that. If you sell most of your stuff direct and you're going there to find dealers, then you've got to really set those dealer appointments up. You've got to make sure that you're really pushing hard for those stores because a lot of times they won't just stop by and, and say, yeah, give me, you know, give me 50 of your product. You've got to set those appointments up. You've got to kind of uh, push a little harder on the front end to make that happen. Um, that's been basically the way that, that we approach this a lot too. Um, you know, work on your contacts, any, any people like maybe YouTube reviewers, any of those type of people you can leverage at the show to give yourself that exposure. Um, it's, it's definitely a big commitment. You know, would we, would we do the show again? Um, they, you know, Nam was asking us if they, if we wanted to sign up for next year, only a couple weeks after the show, and, and obviously we weren't ready to make that that commitment yet. Uh, but it looks like now with the industry being in this kind of very strange spot, and I think Summer Nam is probably in jeopardy. We're not really sure uh, what that looks for, like for us at this point. Um, obviously, we're not going to have the, the, you know, probably the revenue for a while to to uh, look back into going to that show and. And who knows what the next few months holds for all of us in terms of um, this industry and kind of how it recovers. But uh, for us, uh, you know, making this video right now is very weird because it was kind of going to just be a feedback video, but now it's sort of tied into this, you know, what's going on in the world right now. But um, I think it was, again, it was worth, worth it for us to go. 
If you have any questions about um, the dynamics of the show for us, I mean, we can we can share some information. Some stuff we'll probably keep um, keep private, I guess you could say. We'll give you like all the expenses, but you can contact us. You can leave some comments down below, and we're happy to kind of you know kick some stuff back and forth. You know, hey, what did you, what did you think about this part of the show? What did you think about this part of the show? Um, you know, as we as I've been talking here, we've been showing some pictures of the booth, some people that we've met at the show, and and just kind of the fun we had. I think just a part of it was just a lot of fun to to say, hey, we're not building any product for this week, and we're we're just in here and we're showing you guys what we make. We're really proud of our products, and we're really excited to show them to you and just be in a spot where we weren't thinking about um, you know meeting a shipping deadline or or uh, you know, trying to get orders in and products out and, and uh, inventory challenges. We were just focusing on on what our products were. And, uh, you know, every night we'd come back and play guitar at the, at the house and a lot of fun stuff like that, just kind of getting to know our team better and, and moving forward that way. So hopefully this was helpful for, for you. I just kind of wanted to turn the camera on. I was going to script this a lot more, but I think... Uh, just want to sit down and talk with you guys kind of about uh, about the show and its effectiveness for us at Porter. Um, hopefully this was useful for you. Hopefully this is uh, a video that uh, you'd like to see more of this kind of content. Um, let me know in the comments. Uh, happy to, again, create that conversation with you guys. If you've been thinking about going to NAM and you're not sure in the future, uh, that's fine too. You know, let us, let us know if there's anything that uh, we can provide as, as we've kind of made the first jump to go into the show. Um, I know a lot of people have gone to NAM year after year after year. And even after this NAM, some companies were saying, well, we're not doing NAM anymore. I'm not sure we need it. Um, so just, just take a you know, big look at your company overall and what, what, um, where you think you fit in this industry and, where, and how that fits into going to some uh, trade show like this. Um, so thank you guys so much. Um, if you're enjoying this video, please subscribe. Check out the rest of our channel. We've got a lot of how-to videos. We've got guitar videos, pickup videos, things like that. We'll keep the content rolling, especially with all this free time at this point. But uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you next time.